Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Green Chat. We're going to take a closer look at an upcoming MMO, Pantheon Rise of the Fawn. My name is Cleese, and let's get started. So, howdy goes, you guys. Hope you had a good week. I'm recording this on a Sunday afternoon, so my schedule is tight, but... Uh, in any case, uh, I got some questions from you guys today, and also there was a couple of things I wanted to talk about completely unrelated. Almost, I'd almost question whether it should be spoken about on Green Chat at all in its relation to Pantheon, but I think it has some relative uh, points that they connect, you know, like connect the dot games you used to do back in the day when it was fun to connect the dots and the mystery would unravel before you. Anyway, to get started, we're going to do the questions from you guys. There's a, there's a couple of them, and then we're going to talk about the topics I want to talk about. Personally, uh, it came up for me this week, a couple of different things, and let's let's go. Let's go. Okay, I'm being very animated today. It's probably because I'm pressured to get this done so fast. As without further ado, as I say, as I just said, let's begin. All right, so first up, we have a question from Always Diving One, or Always Driving One, or Always Diving One. Uh, he's missing some letters in there, and I think he's going from one of those three. So, uh, before we get in, though, a little caveat. This is a place where you guys can ask me questions. I give my opinion. So, this is just my opinion about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. I'm no way associated with anyone other than myself uh, in this effort. So, let's rock and roll. He's asking me a couple questions here because they're broken up across a couple comments where he asked, you know, we were kind of going back and forth. So, he's asking if there's any chance you can show us what stats look like on items in your next vid. Real quick, please. Just something I'm interested in. So, uh, with that question, I did come across a picture in one of the streams, and I'm going to post it here. But first, let's power up, okay? Let's power up. And super epic transition commence. Sorry, my video editing skills are probably like negative 5,000. So, I'm going to place the item, I hope, right here. Uh, let's put it right here. Right? Oh, man, this is tough. Right, right in these... Ah! Let's hopefully it's right there in that little spot. Uh, and that, ooh, maybe I should like freeze frame for a little bit. Like, oh, I'm holding this, this really heavy item. Oh my God. Uh, uh, that is, hopefully that was long enough. You can pause it if it wasn't long enough. Uh, but before we can be in, or excuse me, before we keep going, let's shrink back down. Let's get small again. And we're back and we're small again. So um, that was the item. Uh, I just wanted to show you a quick glance what that was. It's the Fist of Lunar Eclipse. I wasn't actually reading the details while I was holding up in my head. But uh, I'll just keep it on the screen right now just so you can kind of check it out. But it's pretty basic. It's so some stats. Uh, pretty basic looking dealio. Uh, it's got attack, delay. Now, uh, auto attack is going to be more prevalent in this game like your white damage. Um, white damage is the damage you passively do with your auto attacks with any given weapon or, s or maybe your staff if you're like a wizard. But, I mean, you're not going to have auto attacking like whoo, whoo, with your wizard staff in this game. Um... You might whip it out and do a little uh, which on like, you know, kick them with it, but you're not going to be sitting there, you know, shooting bolts. A anyway, moving on. Uh, so, yeah, so the damage is uh, 3 to 15, no big deal. Uh, and there's some stats on it. Looks pretty cool. And again, this is just pre alpha, so this is probably a lot of placeholder information for them just to tweak with items and play with them and then give you a general look at what it looks like. So, what I found kind of interesting is the detail of the actual the bag that's going on there is pretty detailed so yeah, I would expect a more detailed texture to the item description and stuff like that but there you go there you go enjoy okay moving on sorry guys uh, that was kind of I probably made that way longer than it should have needed to be so anyways uh, always uh, driving one or always driving one gosh it's gonna kill me till I die you should tell me you should tell me next time you see a video like dude you say it like this bro uh, a second question from Always Dri uh, Driving One is uh, also, as the testing goes on, can you keep us updated about stuff like respawn times, particularly in dungeons or mobs needed for quest progression, and how areas feel crowded wise waiting on mobs, dungeons, repops? Thanks. So, great question actually, and I just totally skipped over my head. So, a lot of people are going to be used to logging into a game and be like, yeah, and then you go to the noob area or you go to the, you know, the, the beginning area in a game. And there's like, you know, 25 mobs and like 500 players all trying to get like a wolf's head and like, oh my gosh. And by the time you actually kill the mobs you want, it's like, dude, this is great experience, guys. Um, so, but more along this question is asking in dungeons and stuff, what to really expect uh, from 
not having any instances because now you've got one dungeon uh, let's say the first level 15 dungeon which is going to be a little different relative to other MMOs they're much more like specific like this is a dungeon another MMO where this one's just like this is more of an area like it's going to be you know rich with uh, challenges and stuff like that more difficult probably more risky but have more loot and stuff so with that I know I, I guess I'll start this and then build on it later cause it's something good to build on as testing goes on and as they expand on what they're going to be doing with their population caps and stuff like that per server so what i've would expect is it's kind of like this so a dungeon will be able to hold so many people right let's say dungeon a b and c you've got those three dungeons dungeon a has like the most immaculate loot in the game it's got this awesome stuff b is like eh, and then c is like oh my gosh this place is terrible but let's say experience from all these places are pretty decent so what tends to, what you could see happening is a lot of the best groups will find their way into dungeon a uh, and then if more people try to overcrowd the zone typically what can happen is people will say this isn't worth it let's go to a different one now i don't think they're going to be like hey abc make a's loot amazing they're probably going to make like you know amazing loot come from fall three um but there's definitely going to be areas where you'll want to be more so than not in any different geographical type position that you're in so how would i say so is how they're going to control crowding is definitely just basically limiting the amount of people that can be on each server uh granted that'll probably be a lot they've been kind of shooting around like 2000 2500 uh you guys might feel like that's pretty low but uh world of warcraft 11 million people or whatever subscribed at one point they had i think at the high times on their servers it was around 25,000, 20,000. uh and then in the normal times it was like ten thousand. Uh, at least back in those instances that was i think i don't even know why i went into that but i think that was back in like 2014 they did a census on that stuff and uh, blizzard did kind of comment on it so 2500 is actually a lot especially in a persistent world now you went over to wow that was not persistent that was all instanced and you know it you know sometimes seemed like a lot or not a lot depending on where you were uh, so I think 2,500 is a lot of people. So it's 3,000 stuff like that. Um, so, so let me round this out. Uh, dungeons will kind of control their own population and stuff like that. I don't think you'll be vying for so much quest items and stuff like that and positions in dungeons so much versus if you're going in with a very healthy group. Now, if you're going in their LFG, it's going to be harder to squeeze your way into certain camps, depending on what class you are. But, uh, that's going to be a point of this game is that you're going to be able to go to areas and feel the social you're going to have a social uh presence pretty much wherever is hot or wherever is the two place uh two place to be so i personally think that's kind of cool it's definitely going to impact your quests it might not impact your uh progression at all because uh if some place is crowded there will be potentially you know there's there's not going to be an issue with you finding a place to level because there's going to be so much lateral areas so there'll be there'll be areas that like you can go here if you're level 45 or you can go here or here or here or here you know it's going to be a lot of different places whatever suits your fancy maybe you want to hang out in a desert one day and the next day you want to be on the high seas and running around from island to island and then maybe you want to be in like a volcano for some reason because you like because uh, you're really hot and you need to find something that's potentially as hot as you so that's it so quests yes uh and especially for like major quests you're gonna have camps for specific guys uh and that's just part of the challenge of the game but you're not gonna run into it where at least in current mmos where you're sitting there and you literally have nothing to do because the game is frustratedly so packed in specific spots you're like i log in and everything for me to do is consumed by other people right now because of the way it's been designed. I would not foresee that being an issue in Pantheon Rise of Fallen. Uh, and if it is, it definitely sounds like a major concern of theirs and they're experienced with dealing with this type of environment uh, with persistent worlds and stuff. And I feel like they have a good reign on what to expect and then how to deal with anything that pops up. Uh, and it already is on the front burner for their concerns because they brought it up many times. What do you guys think a good healthy number for each server is? What would you expect? Blah, blah, blah. Um, in ways they're already combating this or not combating, but dealing with this would be uh, free server tr uh, shard transfers because one big issue is your buddies. is a social game and then there's a lot of debate whether, you know, are they going to tie uh, transferring servers behind uh, 
a, a cost amount or a fee charge and stuff like that. They probably might, but uh, it's just at least that they're they're discussing it. So that's a good sign. Anyways, hopefully that answered the question. And then in the future, I will continue because there really isn't much on this right now because we're in pre-alpha and it's only a handful of people. But uh, I will definitely keep you posted on this one and have recurring updates when I get more information. And always, always driving one. Thank you for the question. Okay, next we're moving along here. So if you guys at all look at the comments in my in my channel, uh, a good thing to bring up would be Mr. Zomzi Bomb. Like blew me up with all these awesome comments like you suck and your mustache is terrible. He said some other things, but I'll save that language for <sighs> I don't know where I'll save that language for. Never. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, really interesting. Really interesting. Basically told me or said uh, he hates the mustache. Man, it's okay. You hate it, dude. It's probably because you can't grow one. No, I'm just kidding. You could probably grow a mustache. You should. You should, bro. So... Uh, hates the mustache. Sorry, it was kind of started off as a joke, and it just it just can't. It's taking over my life, to be honest. It's uh, it's mustache or no stash. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but one thing he did, uh, he really harped on the games and this graphics that you see in the background. So this is pre-alpha footage. I mentioned this a few times already. And you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, enough of the enough of the comments about that. But if you know anything about pre-alpha, you can look up any game in that phase, and it looks terrible. Everything's a lot of placeholders, stuff like that. So again, I cover. Uh, because it was brought up, and uh, boom, that's it. So expect a much more polished experience, obviously, once the game is released. Uh, that's just how it works. That's how developing a game makes sense. So that is that. So let's move on. Next up, we have a comment from a gentleman named Dakota Wright, and he's commenting, I'm 19 and I play EverQuest. Well, Project 99. I love the challenge and it forces players to band together and communicate less toxic as well. Friendships are more valuable, but I'm 19. It's not only the older crowd. I think what he's going on about is a lot of people will mention, uh, I think I'm actually guilty of this too. And this comment kind of makes me rethink a lot of that position, I guess. So a lot of people going on about the crowd that wants instant gratification and Dakota right here is like, dude, psh, what? Granted, he's 19, that's an older gen. I think we're talking more like the 13s and 12s, stuff like that. They're real young, uh, not to say that's really young, but I mean, you know, if you're 33 like I am, that's kind of young, but uh, by no means is that like, you don't deserve a voice. And that's kind of what this got me to think about is, I think when we say, you know, the younger crowd that wants instant gratification, I think that's, because I remember being that young and there's plenty of people around me who didn't like MMOs and I played EverQuest. And that was super like, oh my gosh, like not gratifying instantly at all. It took like weeks and people are like, how can you get into this? So I think they always did exist. I think what we're seeing now more though, is that video games have kind of gently glided into a more popular position uh, in just the social setting in general. So you're having a lot more people out there and then uh, video game companies are able to leverage this to potentially create games and make a ton of money for the most part. And, you know, money is more accessible. It's more out there, you know, like, hey, mom, can I, not to say kids are doing this, but like back when I was starting EverQuest and I'd be like, hey, mom, can I uh, use your credit card to subscribe to games? She'd be like, what? Are you nuts? And I did like do chores and stuff like that. Where now if, I mean, I got a two-year-old, if he was like, hey, dad, can I subscribe to this? I wouldn't have a second thought. I'd be like, yeah, sure you go, bro. I mean, I wouldn't call him, bro. I'd call him, I'd call him young gentleman. But um, you get my point. It's, it's not fair to really say, to go on it's i feel like it's kind of stereotyping and really shuts people down where they could have a really strong opinion or really have a good point and otherwise like it discounted so really all i'm saying about this is that i think everybody should have a voice as far as pantheon goes and just because you're young really shouldn't matter and it's i don't think we should assume that anybody who has a negative idea in there or what we feel is a, an idea that compromises what pantheon is potentially that they're just instant gratification or assume that there's in a toxic environment. Because a lot of the times we just jump to conclusions like, because we're so fed up with it. I think in what drives that more than the actual social environment is the companies because they're the ones that are making the choices. They're making the calls, you know? Yeah, sure, their forms are getting blown up and people are like, oh, I'm an unsub. But there's a lot of people actually unsubbing usually. Not usually, people just keep playing. And so I think it's really the companies that are following these trends trying to make more money is really the ones that are creating an instant gratification problem 
yeah, you know, uh, I know there's like a demand versus need, or if there was no demand for it, there would be no product for it kind of deal. But I guess what I'm saying is that demand is technically probably always been there. And technology has brought it to a point where we're at this crossroads where making a game that has time sinks in it is difficult to level, punishing deaths, uh, stuff like that. A lot like Project 99, which is EverQuest, I think, with the Kernark expansion on it. it. I guess it depends on what server you're playing on. But, okay, so I'm kind of going on here. Basically, to wrap this statement up or this thought, I think we it, it's you shouldn't jump on the case of people trying to state their case. This happens all the time, even in Pantheon forms right now, but this happens just in general as a game develops. Uh, which the developer obviously is looking at it very objectively, but we look at it very personally. But if somebody younger jumps in there, especially even if they have like a lot of, to you as stupid ideas, I think Pantheon should acknowledge it and let them make the choice. But again, bring as good a debate to it as possible and as welcoming as you are would set the stage for how welcoming they would expect Pantheon to be. Furthermore, if some other people are watching your conversation, you know, how you react, uh, you being a fan of Pantheon, the other person being a skeptic potentially, uh, is really gonna set the stage for what they would expect when they log in. You know, like if I go over to different games forums and I'm looking at potential guilds, uh, watching how that guild responds to people, uh, you know, like, hey, hit me up, and they're like, you know, whatever, uh, would be one great example of what to expect from that guild. Uh, then again, there's always this sugar-coated candy effect where everybody's always putting on this third persona of, I'm so great. But uh, yeah, I just really wanted to bring that up because I feel like uh, there's a negative connotation surrounding the younger folk who like to enjoy these games. And potentially they might have a comment or, a, or they have to hide behind a, a different persona. And uh, to cut it right, I, I appreciate the comment, man. And uh, I like how you stepped forward and said this. I thought it was really cool. And it really changed the way I think a lot. I know it seemed kind of stupid to think, but I had this feeling like I had to, almost had to like, carefully approach somebody who might be like younger thinking about Pantheon and almost have to detail in a completely different way. Uh, but I think it'd be more sensible just to treat them like I would anybody else. And that's with respect and not to say it wouldn't before, but uh, yeah, really awesome, man. Thank you for the question or the comment rather. And um, let's let's move to the next one. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay, so next up, this is not a question from you guys. This is something I've spoken about before, and when more details came out, I said I would cover it. So, at least I think I did. I hope I did, because I'm going to. So there was a recent interview done by Bashkam TV, who's on YouTube, and he spoke with Corey Lefevre, which is a game designer for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And they mostly talked about crafting and uh, trade skills and stuff like that, and gathering, harvesting, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there was a couple things they spoke about that I thought was really interesting that... It should be highlighted, at least I'm going to do that here. So a couple things that they mentioned upon is when you're gathering resources out in the world, it's going to be very rare to come by your resources. It will not be uh, dual collecting or stuff like that. You will, if you see the node, you yourself will get it only. Um, <clears throat> so nodes will be rare. Also, you can gather anything on one given tune if you have the appropriate tools. And I thought that was pretty neat. So resources out in the world will be more rare. It won't be which I think it's, it's good because a lot of the games there's like, like Corey mentioned in the interview, a lot of people, uh, as you probably couldn't re, you know, recall after playing any MMO is that you usually get like a circle you run in uh, on like a five minute loop of a zone or something and you look for a node in any mine and you do that for hours on day. So they're really not gonna let that be a thing in Pantheon or they're gonna try to avoid that by how they put their nodes in the game and where they hide them and not where they hide them, but maybe even hide them, but where they place them and how frequent they spawn and how they spawn. I feel like they're going to have more intelligent spawn, which I think is really awesome because I mentioned last time, I really hate how, especially gold farmers, will run some kind of scripts or something to make their characters port around. Somehow they always figure out to do that stuff. Basically, if you want to do it, you'll do it. Uh, obviously, there'll be consequences to it, but this will really combat that. I think that's super awesome. So nodes will be rare. Nodes will also be difficult to get to. Uh, they'll potentially be deep down in dungeons for some specific notes. Also, Corey mentioned, which I think is really cool, is if you ever played Final Fantasy XIV online or Realm Reborn, uh, the, how, how their crafting system works, it kind of sounded like he was leaning towards that's how it works. So 
it, it, if you've never played that, basically, let's say you're like a woodworker, you have skills. Like literally you have like, I don't know, even at top level, you got like 15, 20 skills that you use in crafting to make a given item. And what you would do then is, let's say you craft an item, ping, 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 and you'll get 800 experience or something like that from crafting that one item. And then you'll level up like you would your regular character. So you could be a level 45 woodcrafter. I don't even know if woodcrafting is that. Let's, say, let's do something more simple, blacksmith thing. Let's say you're a level 45 blacksmith and you're a level 50 character in the game. And then he said also he wants it to be as difficult to level a crafting skill as it would be to level your regular tune as far as your adventure modes go and stuff like that. Um, so pretty, pretty nifty gifty, I think. And then also, uh, he mentioned that if somebody solely wanted to craft, so with this crafting system, it sounds more involved, uh, that you're actually going to need skill, potentially the choices you make while you're even just crafting a single item. Uh, it's hard to explain how that works, but if you have played Final Fantasy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but you need to do certain things along the course, excuse me. But you need to do certain things along the course of just crafting a single item to make it come out as a higher quality or better quality item than including the, the materials you lose, or excuse me, including the material you use, it also takes player skill to craft a really high quality item. Um, versus current games where you hit create and it's more like percentage based. For example, like you have a 50% chance of this thing being awesomely epic or 20% chance, whatever the case may be. This one's more like as you craft it, it's like a little bar fills up potentially. They haven't really gone into this detail, but let's say a bar fills up and you make choices along the way as you craft to complete an item. And when you complete it, you get experience. And then your goal is, is to level up to 50 as a blacksmith uh, by crafting items. So pretty cool, I think. Uh, just a couple of little tidbits there as far as how rare the nodes are. Or to summarize that, just a quick uh, little couple tidbits of how rare the nodes will be, which I think is really cool. You will only solo be able to solo gather these nodes. Uh, there won't be any like team gathering and stuff like that. And they want to do that to limit the amount of certain items in the world to give crafting uh, like rare items more meaning to them. Because if you know five people could mine one node, that's super rare, and that's just going to make that item less rare potentially. And then lastly, as far as the skills involved to actually craft your items and how you're going to level up blacksmith uh, just like you would adventuring. So you're going to be level 50 blacksmith would be, you know, max level. And that's not to say your skills also, there'll be skills involved with any given craft. And not sure if I mentioned it already or not, you will be able to, if you want to, just solely become a blacksmith. You can enter into the world of Pantheon Rise of Fallen. And if your goal is to be a blacksmith and that's your only interest, they're saying they'll give you that option, which I think is really cool. Or if you want to be a Fletcher or, you know, I should probably, before I start going off in different trade skills, I should make sure that's actually a trade skill because uh, I'm not looking at them in front of my face. But yeah, blacksmithing, fishing, uh, cooking, all these are going to be regular things that you can just solely do in the game and make a, make a fun time of it. You can go on an adventure fishing trip this weekend if Pantheon was out or next weekend. Okay, next up, uh, another topic I wanted to talk about which came up for me this week. I forget how exactly it was. Uh, it's really getting old how epic things are. Uh, I, I think I was watching a game trailer and there was the hero or the protagonist or whatever the case. I forget exactly which was, you know, going through this little spiel in this intro trailer. And it's one guy or, or girl and, you know, they're fighting and then all of a sudden they get unlucky and they get like, ah, oh, they're on the ground and they get surrounded by like 50 dudes. And then for some reason they're like, and they get all upset and they just blow everything apart. Uh, and it's like every game trailer is like that. It gets, I mean, not not really like the ones that are like spooky. Spooky games seem to have a spooky persona, but any like MMO lately is just all about this amazing like, oh, I'm so epic. Oh, you can be epic too, man. And I feel like it's just getting really stale. It's been going on now for like 18 years almost. It feels like even more with the same kind of feel to these games where there used to be like more intrigue involved like you'd almost be like what w this game looks interesting to me uh not just oh i want to be super epic man and just smash some skulls and i guess i mean pantheon is definitely going to be you know bringing bringing the bar down again as far as the level like when you're level one wolves are going to be super dangerous rats might kill you whatever you don't need 
like some crazy harpy swooping out of some tree and just getting owned or yeah i guess uh, that's not even really the case it's more the case that uh, maybe i should ask you guys what do you think like just these games are trying to be so dang epic and they're losing themselves in what could be a really awesome story and they're just constantly having to one-up their epicness with more epicness and it's epically just epic explosion it's explosioned epic explosion i can't say that word very well but you know what i'm saying and it just gets like oh my gosh like gosh dang i don't know why i even wanted to bring that up i just feel like uh already pantheon has that tone of not trying to smash you in the face with epic thing after epic thing of how epic they are and they're kind of more being real with us as far as what to expect and i think that's really cool and they're like yeah let's bring it back down and it feels more like I don't want to say like adventurous, but it feels more like immersive to be more realistic and kind of have a more intrigue point of view or intrigue story to dive into versus the latter of, oh, super epic. Okay, I'm gonna stop going on about this epic crap. You get, you get, you get what I'm saying. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think epic has its time? Or do you think that time is done? You should let me know because I see even right there. I said that I tried to be epic when I was like, Dah. you know, like, come on, man. I should have been like, and who knows what to expect next intrigue. All right, let's move on. All right. And, uh, the, the past one, excuse me, with the epicness was kind of a, do I even include in this video? I just, it's really kind of bothering me and I wanted to include it here. And if you guys say nothing about it, that's cool. I'll never talk about it again, but if you do have some comments on it, uh, I think that'll also be cool too. I, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but yeah. So moving on, uh, oh, this is another one, which I, I, it's kind of Pantheon related, but not so much. It's more community base of the community around Pantheon. And uh, that was Twitch and its impact. So what do I mean by Twitch and its impact? So if you can look across certain games, let's use any game out right now, uh, even the shareholders and the, all the important people that fund these games, we'll look at Twitch as a relative bench to see how well a game is doing. If a game is in top five on Twitch, that's awesome. So what has that done to video games? That has done a few things, but one of them is, does because a game is popular on Twitch, does that mean that game is fun to play? Uh, this has been beaten to death and it absolutely means no. Uh, most of the games that are in the top, top whatever Twitch are usually pretty boring, uh, but they are good to cast games. Like you need, you need a game where you can give it 50% of your focus because you're focused halfway on your stream to really entertain your uh, your your customers or your, your viewer base. You can't, if you're 100% sucked into a game because it's so awesome or immersive or really draws your attention or takes that much of your focus to play, then it's not going to be a good game to, to put on Twitch because that's just what it is. And, and that's kind of gotten people confused because they're not part of, they're just investors. They don't go home and I mean, some of them probably do, but they don't really, you know, I'd say the majority of them do not go home and log into something, League of Legends, and start playing that game. Probably not. So I think Twitch, uh, why I even bring this up is recently uh, Pantheon has done some streams and they've decided to use very popular Twitch personas that are you know to host or to be a part of their uh, developer streamcast in pre-alpha and a lot of people that at least on these different subreddits and stuff like that really got upset that pantheon would reach out to those to those folks that really haven't even talked about pantheon up until recently uh versus jumping on to somebody who's been covering even project 99 or these types of games for like 10 years, making content, making YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I totally feel for those dudes, but at the same time, uh, again, you can see why I didn't feel like this should be covered in green chat, but I think it's important. Uh, and I really feel bad for those guys that have been covering for 10 years and they really feel like they got gypped. Like, oh my God, I got gypped, man. But that's another problem with Twitch is you can't, when you put yourself up on Twitch, you're gonna want as much coverage as possible. It's, it's almost like an advertisement scheme. And uh, uh, Ko was the guy who, who covered it, which, you know, he's a, he's a cool guy. He's just a random gamer that 
just games, a bunch of different games, and he used to play EverQuest, and he thought it was really awesome, and they blah, 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 it all worked out. But the people I got upset about that, honestly, I think what you really need to realize is that Twitch is just going to be that monster. It's going to make you feel bad. It's going to make people feel left out. That's just the nature of the game. And really, honestly, you should try to support Pantheon. However, it sees it can support itself, and that's through Twitch. That's fine. Um, but try not to get too upset of their choices and stuff like that because they have to make it make sense. Like, they're going to pick a streamer that gets a ton of views per day so when they jump into pantheon people will jump in there and be like oh cool man what's this and they'll cover as much as they can versus if they picked like potentially nobody uh not really nobody but a, a persona that doesn't really exist on twitch or you know only has like you know shoot, let's say 300 followers uh you're not really a good candidate it doesn't make sense to pick you because they need somebody who has a lot of coverage they need their game to pop up in the top 20 on Twitch so yeah so in my opinion that's uh, how Twitch can negatively you know it, it really kind of makes a uniquely odd situation for the game developer and its uh, player base and at the same time it's difficult just to kind of to be supportive and not get acknowledged it's super it's super difficult um, it's just not everybody's can of worms so with that being said, uh, I think Twitch is potentially, you know, it's kind of kind of boiling down a little bit now, but it really impacted games, I think, in a really terrible way um, as far as how well a game is doing and stuff like that, because it's really hard for people to measure how well their game is doing. And to summarize that out, sorry for bringing that into here. I know that's not Pantheon related, even though it kind of is in this tense, uh, but I really just wanted to give a shout out to everybody out there that has been supporting Pantheon even 10 years ago or five years ago and making content on this game and you know creating websites uh blowing up the forums keeping keeping it all live because you guys have really it's the crowd that has gotten pantheon to this point and i think that's really awesome and you guys deserve your kudos and i'd personally like to thank you because i had no idea this i had no idea this game was going on until 2015 i think I just randomly came across it and I was like, holy cow, this is awesome. And if it wasn't for you guys, that never would have happened, uh, you know, from the very beginning. So from my heart to yours, I thank you. And try not to get upset at Pantheon or any of the choices. It's really Twitch and that monster uh, a platform that really can spin you the wrong way. So if, you know, you feel betrayed at all, I think that'd be the wrong position to have. Uh, it's almost super difficult just to swallow your pride and say, hey, uh, it makes sense why you didn't choose me. Not me, but you know I'm trying to emulate because I am I'm a, I am on Twitch, but I can't I can't handle it. It's too my schedule just mm, mm. I'm probably gonna Twitch uh, Pantheon because why not? Oh, cool. Oops, I keep hitting my mic, but I'm probably gonna Twitch Pantheon because that's just freaking awesome. Why wouldn't you? But uh, 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 yeah. So with that, I'm gonna close out that topic. Done. Boop. All right, guys, and with that, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Uh, I know this was kind of a 50-50 episode. I had a lot of stuff in here that was meh. Uh, you know, I could have talked about it somewhere else, but I felt like here was an appropriate place. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe to get any future notifications for any uploads that I do. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again really soon.